everybody, my name is Kathy Ekdahl and I'm a fitness trainer, a strength and conditioning coach, and most importantly for you guys, I'm a Titleist Performance Institute golf fitness instructor. And I've been training golfers for about 15 years now, a little bit more. And today I'd like to share with you uh, some insight around what muscles in your body are used during the golf swing. Probably a better thing to say is what muscles are not used during the golf swing because in all honesty, your whole body produces force for the golf swing. But today, I want to talk about different parts of the golf swing, what muscles are involved, with the purpose of steering you towards the correct kind of exercise that will enhance your golf swing. Now, there are many different kinds of exercise we can engage in, from yoga to Pilates to strength training to cardiovascular fitness to flexibility programs to balance programs. They're all great, and we all should keep fit for golf. But there are some very specific things you can do for your golf game and your golf swing, and I want to review some of those things today. Now, before we start, I just want to say I am not going to tell you how to swing a golf club. Um, I've been golfing since about 2000. Um, I am still what I consider a beginner golfer. I have so much to learn, but I have a very clear understanding of how the body is used during the golf swing. That's my forte. How to swing a golf club is between you and your golf coach, your golf pro. So I cannot emphasize enough the importance of finding a good teaching pro that you resonate with, whose learning style you enjoy, and collaborate with them. They're your best friend. They're gonna help you go from beginner to moderate and more. So I believe that taking lessons and working with the pro is absolutely a very valuable thing for you to do. As far as I'm concerned and what I do, I'm a body person and I'm going to share that information with you. And as always, if you have any specific questions, you can email me. My email is Kathy at personalbestpersonaltraining.com and my website is personalbestpersonaltraining.com. I have a ton of golf content on there, so head over there and take a peek. Alrighty, so the golf swing. As I already said, or if I have and I want to reiterate, your entire body is used in the golf swing, from your feet, to your calves, to your hips, to your obliques, your main anterior core muscles, and then your posterior chain, the muscles of your back, your glutes, and your upper back. Of course, we know the shoulders and arms are used, although those should be the muscle groups because they're very small, that do not take most of the brunt when you're swinging a golf club. When we're swinging a golf club, we want to use the big muscles of the body to generate force, club head speed, and power. We don't want to use our arms, right, to do those things because that's how we get injuries. So let's start with your golf address. Now everybody's golf address is a little bit different. And I've got my seven iron here. So I'm going to set up in my address and you can see that I'm in a pretty straight address. I'm not tucked under like this, nor am I highly arched. We want a neutral spine. At golf address, you don't think about using your muscles, but in reality, you're using all of your postural muscles. So as you address the ball, you have your feet to the ground, so you have feel there. You are slightly hinged from the hips. This is called a hip hinge. There's a lot of people who can't do a hip hinge. So if you're a new golfer, you've got to practice this motion. It's called a hip hinge, and it's the start of a deadlift. This is a deadlift motion. Okay, so if you can't sit your hips back, you're gonna have a real hard time with your address. So we wanna be able to hip hinge, which is a function of core strength. At address, your abs are working, your low back and your upper back are working, 
and your thighs are working. And all of those things together are in a static or held position. So going forward, any exercise which does a static or isometric contraction of the abdominals is very valuable for you. At a dress, you don't want to be rounded. Your shoulders want to be back. So any exercises that work the upper back to pull the shoulder blades together are going to be very valuable. So upper back, core, and then the ability to hip hinge. All right, so let's um, do a different angle here. And again, I'm not teaching you how to swing a golf club. Uh, you might want to look away. I'm going to just bring the club back. So as I bring the club back, You'll notice that I'm trying to keep this arm very straight. As the club comes back to the top of the back swing, higher, if that's what you like, the biggest part of your body is a twist. That's the biggest part of this part of the golf swing, is a big twist through your rib cage muscles. So as we twist, one side of our rib cage is contracting, the other side of our rib cage is stretching. Those are your oblique muscles. Your upper back muscles are also twisting. So working on the mobility of your mid back and your thoracic spine around here is very important for the golf swing. Not only for the back swing, I'm a righty, so going back to the right, but for the follow through, which we'll talk about in a couple seconds. So as I bring the club back, I'm using my shoulders. They definitely have to work in order to get the club up here. I feel a big twist in my rib cage and you can see my hips are slightly moving to the right. They're not swaying, they're not shifting, but I'm turning and loading up this hip. So that weight shift, is contingent on the mobility of your hips. You need to make sure that your hips can rotate inward and outward in order to have a good golf swing. So if you don't have hip rotation and you have very poor rotation through your mid back, your golf swing is gonna reflect that, all right? So think about keeping your hips very mobile and your upper back very mobile but the middle of your body, very stable. I don't want to turn everything like this. I'm gonna lose power, all right? So in the back swing, we isolate the upper body. We have a little shift through the hips and you can see I'm taking the weight into my right leg. This is very important. When I shift my weight, this side of my body has to be super strong. Otherwise, when I shift my weight, I'll sway, right? And that's another power leak. So on the back swing, we've got to have strong shoulders. We've got to have strong forearms that can pull the club up. And we have to have hips that rotate a little, but then hold us still. So you need to work on um, the muscles of your lateral body for golf. That's very important. Okay, so at the top of the back swing here, okay, it's also your rotator cuff. Now you might not feel like your rotator cuff is working, but the ability to do this is all rotator cuff. So when you're looking at strength training for golf, you gotta do your rotator cuff. So the backswing starts with a big twist through the body, a weight shift, and arms that are capable of holding the golf club up. Here comes the fun stuff. So I'm at the top of my backswing. Now I'm going to come down towards the ball in no particular order. The first thing that happens is a weight shift. You start to get a weight shift through here. You're pushing your hips through. That's all butt. That's all hips and butt. So one of the primary body parts you gotta work in golf is your tush, your glutes, okay? Bridges, deadlifts, lunges, they have to be part of your golf specific training program. As we bring the club down, the arms are coming down 
And that's all your lats, okay? Your lats bring the club down. So a lat pull down is a very nice exercise for golf fitness, as is a single arm row. You can also do straight arm press downs with a cable system. That's wonderful for golf. So the lats located here in your body, they help to produce force. Most important, however, is your hips. Now, if you can't get your hips through, you're gonna end up using your arms too much and you're gonna end up with sh shoulder, elbow, wrist issues. So as we're at the top of our backswing and we come down to the ball, there's the start of a hip shift and then that's gonna pull the arms down, right? The arms are gonna come down and release as they hit the ball. At ball strike, you're here. You're, you're down, right? You wanna stay down on the ball. Your hips come through. That's all glute, okay? So when we make our weight transference from our right side to our left side, what produces force is our glutes, our hips, and our abdominals. When we translate force from the ground to our hands to the club head, it has to travel through the body. So the forces travel from the ground all the way through the body to the end of your club. If you don't have a strong core, you're gonna get power leaks along the line so that by the time you have the club coming down, you've lost a lot of power, okay? So strong core, strong glutes. So because we're inside and it's yucky out, I'm not gonna swing this club, but I want to emphasize a little bit, let me come over here, what happens after you swing and hit the ball. You come down, you release, and now your body twists and the club comes here. Again, don't look at my golf swing, just imagine it's a good golf swing. At ball strike, you're hitting that ball with upwards of 80 miles an hour, 90 miles an hour forces. Think about the forces on your hand and wrist and elbows. That's a lot. So don't underestimate the force of ball strike. Even though it's a little ball and kind of a light club, you need to have strength and resilience to not hurt yourself. Now, at ball strike, what we know from the Titleist organization is you don't ever want to be striking the ball with this big arch here. That's really going to hurt your back. At ball strike, you're actually tucked under. Your tushy is tucked under and your low back is a little bit rounded. So you have to be able to both extend your spine and tuck under, extend and tuck under. Those are all used during the golf swing, whether or not you realize it. So at ball strike, get the bum under, tuck your hips under if you can, that's what you're supposed to do. That's gonna produce power. Now on your finish, right? Maybe I'm here. So my arms are up, my body is turned, my belly button is facing my target. And everything from the ball strike afterwards is a giant stretch on your body. It's a big whipping twist. And so when you're twisting, and especially where you've got some decent club head speed, some decent power, you're really stretching the muscles very, very fast. So when I talk about strength and I talk about flexibility, the importance of both of those is resiliency. After ball strike, all of those forces I created then have to eventually be stopped. And so on the finish, you know, if you don't have the kind of core control to stop your body from whipping, to keep control, you could hurt your back. Maybe your arms whip because you don't have good strength. So remember that strength is about tissue resiliency as is flexibility. So we looked at golf address. It's a static position, planks, bird dogs, um, other variations like that are perfect. On the backswing, it's a hip shift 
and hip rotation. You gotta have rotation through the hips. At the top of the swing, we've got some shoulder strength and some rotator cuff strength. As we come down, we're using our lats, our pectorals, but most importantly, this to get your hips through at ball strike. At ball strike, the hips are tucked under, that's protective, and you're using your bum and your abs at ball strike, right? And then at finish, we need to be resilient so that as we finish all the way to the target, that our muscles don't get pulled. So that's a tiny, a uh, brief analysis, knowing that the golf swing is much more complex than that, I just want to share with you some of um, the ways your muscle moves. And lastly, never underestimate how much your forearms need strength. You're gripping that club, whatever position, your forearms are taking the brunt of it. So if you develop elbow pain or wrist pain, it very well could be because your forearms are weak and you've started to develop some trigger points and knots there. So please make sure that you take care of your forearms, um, especially as a new golfer, you might be using your arms more than the rest of your body and you're much more predisposed to injury in the upper body. So keep that in mind, abs, glutes, rotator cuff, upper back, those all need to be strong. Your upper back needs to be flexible, as do your shoulders, and your hips need to be able to rotate. So those are the things that you really want to focus on as you try to take the ground force up through your body into the club head at ball strike. Well, I hope that helps. And as I always say, if you have any questions, feel free to email me, Kathy at personalbestpersonaltraining.com. 